In 2013, LeBron James had nearly the greatest single season in NBA history. But what happened instead was arguably the biggest robbery in NBA history. That year, LeBron had accomplished literally everything. NBA champion, finals MVP, regular season MVP, a 27-game win streak, All-NBA first team, and All-NBA defensive first team. The only major award he didn't win was Defensive Player of the Year which he finished second in voting for behind Marc Gasol. And what's crazy is the fact that Marc Gasol didn't even make first team all defense. He made the second team. And yet somehow he was the best defensive player of the year. But that's not even the biggest robbery LeBron faced that season. You see, LeBron was just one single vote away from being the first ever unanimous MVP in league history. LeBron received 120 out of 121 first place votes for MVP. And the one voter out of 121 who didn't vote for LeBron? Yeah, he voted for Carmelo Anthony, who literally ended up finishing in third place in MVP voting, behind Kevin Durant who finished second. And you might be wondering, who in the hell could that one voter be? And how could he have committed such a travesty? Well, to find out, we simply have to start from the beginning. Not one championship. Not two. LeBron, tell us about that. Not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven. 11 months after LeBron promised to win seven championships, he was embarrassed in front of the whole world when Dirk and the Mavs defeated Miami in the 2011 NBA Finals. But not only did LeBron lose, he was outplayed by a 5'11 J.J. Barea. The Mavs exposed some big holes in LeBron's game. A bad outside shot. And the lead is up to five. James fires away. Short. And a complete lack of post game. James on the drive. Look at kids staying in front of him. King James spent nearly the next two weeks in his room, depressed and unwilling to talk to anybody. And then he got to work. LeBron turned to Hakeem Olajuwon, one of the most prolific post scorers ever to improve his game on the low block. James also spent more time in the weight room, adding more muscle to his frame and wouldn't leave the gym before hitting hundreds of jump shots. When the 2012 season started, the results of his workouts were more than obvious. LeBron had the most efficient year of his career, shooting 53% from the field and 36% for three. James spins, gets inside, puts it in, and the foul! He won the regular season MVP and finished fourth in voting for Defensive Player of the Year. In the playoffs, James played the best game of his career in Game 6 against Boston. After he destroyed his arch nemesis, the King defeated the Thunder to win the championship he desired so much. The Miami Heat are once again NBA champions. LeBron James captures that elusive title he so desperately coveted. That first title lifted a weight off LeBron's shoulders, and in 2013, he somehow got even better. LeBron shot 56% from the field and a career-high 41% from three, for an average of 27 points, 8 rebounds, and 7 assists. And while the 2013 LeBron was stylistically the same player he was a year prior, the way Miami coaches Eric Spolstra played LeBron was way different. On offense, the Heat ultimately rejected the notion that you have to play with two bigs, and LeBron was now playing the four operating as a point forward. Miami's small ball lineups made them super fast in transition. Backboard, another King's turnover, a chance to run. Waiting for LeBron! Oh, man! With shooters spread around LeBron, which generated a ton of open shots. James to Allen for three. Bang! Defensively, Coach Spo was the first coach to use aggressive trapping and switching on defense, realizing that LeBron can switch to anybody and guard all five positions. LeBron's versatility was the thing that allowed Spolstra to play only one big man when all other teams played two. And this tactic disrupted the NBA. Miami won a franchise record 66 games, and LeBron deservedly won the MVP for the fourth time. In the playoffs, the Heat got through the East and then played one of the most amazing final series in NBA history against San Antonio. On the verge of defeat, Ray Allen hit a game-tying shot. Back out to Allen, his three-pointer, bang! Tie game with five seconds remaining! And the Heat won Game 6. In Game 7, LeBron proved his clutch factor once again, hitting a championship-winning dagger over Kawhi Leonard. James pulls up, puts it in, 35 for LeBron James! 
But despite all the success, LeBron was still pissed about this season. And he had good reasons for it. Michael Jordan and Hakeem Olajuwon are the only players in NBA history to win MVP and Defensive Player of the Year in the same season. And LeBron wanted to achieve that too. King James finished second in defensive playing voting in 2009, he was fourth in 2010, and fourth again in 2012. 2013 was supposed to be his year, but instead, the award went to Marc Gasol. So, was LeBron really that good defensively? Or is he just salty because he didn't achieve this feat and Michael Jordan did? Because if we look at the defensive stats, Gasol has the edge over LeBron in every category. In defensive plus-minus, a statistic that measures points allowed when a player is on the court. Gasol was first in the NBA at 3.1, while LeBron was fifth at 2.4. In defensive win shares, which is calculated by the number of points allowed per 100 defensive possessions, Gasol was second in the NBA with 5.4, and LeBron was 10th with 4.7. Individual defensive rating also favored the Spaniard, who had a 98.5 defensive rating, a sixth best mark in the league, while LeBron's defensive rating was 101, the 49th best result. Team defensive rating tells the same thing. The Grizzlies had the second best defense in the NBA with 100.3 points conceded at 100 possessions, while the Heat was ninth with 103.7 points per 100 possessions. LeBron averaged 1.7 steals and 0.9 blocks per game, or 2.6 blocks and steals combined, while Gasol averaged 1 steal and 1.7 blocks, again, a higher number than James. So, if all the stats lean towards Gasol, why is LeBron so pissed that he didn't get the award? Award. Well, there are multiple reasons why it was James and not Gasol who should have won it. The first reason is that Defensive Player of the Year is more of a team award rather than an individual one. In 2013, Gasol played with Mike Conley and Tony Allen in the backcourt, who were one of the best, if not the best, perimeter defenders in the NBA at the time. Both Conley and Allen made all defensive teams that year, and Tony was fifth in voting for Defensive Player of the Year. Kobe, toughest defender for you? Tony Allen. That's easy. Mark also had Rudy Gay, Tayshawn Prince, and Zach Randolph, who were all excellent defenders. And with teammates like that, it's much easier to play great defense and have great defensive stats. For example, if Kevin Hart played alongside four NBA players versus LeBron and four five-foot actors, guess what? Kevin Hart would have better defensive stats than LeBron. We're not saying that LeBron didn't have quality teammates and that he played with a bunch of Kevin Harts, but Gasol certainly had more help than James. The second biggest reason why LeBron was snubbed is that the Defensive Player of the Year has historically been a big man award. Between 1997 and 2013, Ron Artest was the only non-big to win the award, and that's what prevailed this time as well. Back in 2013, most of the NBA was still playing with two traditional big men, and post-defense against other centers was what the voters valued the most. However, the third reason, and the most ridiculous thing, was the voting itself, because Marc Gasol won the Defensive Player of the Year, and he didn't make first-team all-defense. How is that even possible? The Defensive Player of the Year was voted for by the media and was separate from all defensive voting, which was voted for by the NBA coaches until they changed this rule in 2014. By coaches voting, it was Tony Allen who received the most votes, with 53 out of 60 possible points. LeBron was second with 52 points, and Gasol was only the fourth best center winning just 12 total points. The same thing happened in 2012, when Tyson Chandler won Defensive Player of the Year and only made the second All-Defensive team. So, we can all agree that the voting was kinda messed up in those years. That especially comes to light with defense, which is hard to measure and quantify in the first place. But does that mean that Marc Gasol didn't deserve it and LeBron was the clear winner? Well, yes and no. There were plenty of guys who deserved to win DPOY that year, and who had excellent defensive stats. Serge Ibaka was the best shot blocker in the NBA. In the hour, rejected by Ibaka. Chris Paul was the best ball thief that year. Green, retaken by Paul. Four, and Paul George always guarded the best opposing player on the best defensive team in the NBA. Oh, got that steal too. And here he goes. Here we go. PG got? puts on oh, the show. Yeah. Tony Allen, Tim Duncan, and Joe Kim Noah all could have won it too. But why did LeBron feel that he was robbed? And what was his case for winning the Defensive Player of the Year? The answer to that is very simple. In 2013, LeBron played the most versatile defense the NBA has ever seen. At 6 foot 9 and 270 pounds, LeBron was big enough to guard power forwards and centers. Clock running down. Herbert, going to keep it alive. And and fast enough to swallow up point guards, who routinely passed up the ball when guarded by James. 
LeBron did many of the same things Marc Gasol did, like masterfully coordinating the defense from the back line and guarding the post. But then he'd also shut down the other team's best players in the clutch. He was jumping into passing lanes to steal and prevent passes. Oh, oh, oh. James with the steal, and LeBron puts it down. And let's not forget about his trademark chase down blocks in transition. Turnover for Miami. Collison, but a basket blocked from behind by James. Throughout NBA history, nobody could guard one through five as successfully as LeBron did in 2013. Pippen was a versatile defender, but he was only 220 pounds and couldn't guard centers. Rodman could guard centers, but he never switched onto point guards like LeBron. Draymond Green's defensive versatility could be compared to James. But Draymond isn't as athletic or as big as LeBron. While there were some great candidates to win the Defensive Player of the Year in 2013, nobody did more different things defensively than LeBron, and that's why he deserved to win the award. However, that wasn't the only way voters robbed LeBron of a perfect season. It also happened with the MVP voting. LeBron dominantly won the MVP in 2013, winning 120 out of 121 first place votes, with one vote going to Carmelo Anthony, which was an absolute joke. Carmelo had a great season. He was the NBA scoring champion, but his efficiency and impact on all facets of the game were far below LeBron's. The guy who voted for Melo was Gary Washburn, a reporter from Boston, where LeBron certainly wasn't the crowd favored after all those battles with the Celtics. Here was Washburn's explanation for the vote. When I placed my MVP vote, I knew I would be in the minority. I knew LeBron James was the favorite to win because he unquestionably is the best player in the game. I voted for Carmelo Anthony based on his importance to the New York Knicks. The dude basically said that he knew LeBron was the best, but still gave it to Carmelo, which was a perfect example of why media voting is a flawed system. Well, I've got nothing against LeBron James. He's the best player of this generation, the best player in the league by far. If it wasn't for Washburn and media voters, LeBron would have been Defensive Player of the Year, the first unanimous MVP in NBA history, and the finals MVP, thus completing the most perfect season in NBA history. But to be fair, this also should have happened in 2000, when Shaquille O'Neal was by far the best player in the NBA. Like LeBron, Shaq also finished one vote shy of becoming the first unanimous MVP when one voter gave his first place vote to Allen Iverson. Iverson's main strength was scoring, but it was Shaq who led the NBA in scoring with 30 points per game, along with 14 rebounds and 4 assists. The Big Diesel also led the NBA in field goal percentage and finished second in total rebounds and third in blocks. The Lakers won 67 games, which was one of the best results in NBA history. For Shaq to not win the unanimous MVP was simply another robbery, and further proof that some of these media voters have no business being anywhere near a role as important as this.